Hello. I feel like David Bellamy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wish I could do the, the impression of him. Are we, <laughs> we're in Woodland. <clears throat> it's a bit busy on the towpath. You know what it's like every time we get the camera out, people start running past us and mm. shouting morning and where's Otis? We're in, or the boat, we are in, we're just off the towpath at Tring Cutting, which is the summit. Uh, it's the highest point of the southern part of the Grand Union Canal and we're in Tring Cutting. It's 395 feet above sea level. Wow. That means we're like 395 feet above where we were at the Thames, doesn't it? That's a long ladder. That, that just, I, I can't believe we've done that many locks. I know. Anyway, here we are. The cutting is a mile and a half long. It's about 30 feet deep. It's just this big long gash in the side <laughs> of the hill, really. <laughs> well, it is, isn't it? And it took five years for the people to cut it. I think it's just because they had like, <laughs> you're right. It's like the, all they had were like pickaxes and wheelbarrows, weren't they? Uh, and then nature kind of took over over the years. What's up with you Nothing. this morning? And all the trees have grown and it's quite nice. I think that's the first time since we've left London that we've had quietness. That we've had quiet. The moorings are just so busy because everybody wants to live and work near London. Yeah. So all the moorings are taken up all the way from Brentford, all the way back up here. And it's only just now starting to quieten off, isn't it? Which is nice. Today, though, we're off again. We're going towards, we're not sure how far we're going to get, but we're heading towards Leighton Buzzard. It's one of them places where if you put your finger on like a map of where you think Leighton Buzzard is, yeah. go on, have a go. You've heard of it, but you don't know where it is. So if, if this is England, put your finger where you think Leighton Buzzard is. No, no, that's Wet Wang in East Yorkshire. <laughs> Try again. No, nope, that's Far Town in Huddersfield. <laughs> you give up? <laughs> there. No, I'm not even going to try and mention that place. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we're, we're no plans today. We've got to try and get as far as we can. <coughs> yeah. Because uh, we've got to up the pace a bit now, haven't we? We have. Yeah. We've got stoppages to beat. Winter stoppages are starting in a few weeks, and where we want to be uh, for the winter, there's a couple of stoppages that we have to get past by the first week in November. So we've got to get the skates on, army trainers, whichever. Where's Otis gone? Oh uh, God. Behind us is the Bullborn workshops. They were built back in the late 1800s and they used to make lock gates there for the canal system. They made them for years, donkey's years, all the way up to about 2004. Then they stopped making them. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> uh, the CRT carried on using the buildings as offices until a couple of years ago and then sold the land and the buildings to a developer and they're now being developed into houses, grade two listed houses. So hopefully, fingers crossed, they're gonna keep the style and the original heritage of the workshops. That'd be nice, because they are nice buildings. Yeah, it would be nice. Just before Marsworth Top Lock is Bulburn Junction, and it's where the Wendover Arm branches away from the main line of the Grand Union Canal. When it was opened back in 1799, it was originally planned to be a feeder, a canal that carries water to the summit of the Grand Union, but it was also navigable for boats, and they carried coal and straw and even horse manure. Yeah, and the local flour mill also took advantage, and they used the canal for their own cargo. Now the arms had a few issues over its history. The original water supply wasn't enough for the needs of the Grand Union Canal. So in 1918, Thomas Telford built the Tringford pumping station and that can deliver over 2.3 billion litres of water every year. That solved the water supply problem, but at one point the canal was actually leaking more of that water than it was supplying to the Grand Union. So at the turn of the 20th century, they just gave up and abandoned the canal to navigation. 
Now a lot of work's been done over the last 30 years to try and reopen it and the Wendover Arm Trust has managed to open the first 1.3 miles again which is great and it goes from the stretch at Marsworth Junction down to a winding hole with some moorings near Little Tring Farm. We're not visiting this time because we're on a tight schedule, we've got to be somewhere before the stoppages start but we'd love to see more of it and maybe one day we'll pay the volunteers a visit. And this is why they have to pump so much water into the summit. There's dozens of locks on either side going north up towards Braunston and south back towards Hemel Hempstead. And when you think that each broad lock uses on average up to a quarter of a million litres of water, that 2.3 billion that's pumped into the summit actually doesn't go that far. It works out at about 27 broad locks worth a day. And I'm sure more locks are used than that. So that's why we have to try and conserve water, so being careful, waiting for other boats and going down and coming up together, it all helps save the water. And it comes from three reservoirs just over my left hand side, over the trees. There's the Tringford Reservoir, the Marsworth Reservoir and the Star Tops Reservoir. Star Tops, when I saw it in the book, reminds me of Star Drops. I don't know if you remember this, maybe especially in the UK when we were kids and it was like a, a cheap washing up liquid and we used to use it for blowing bubbles. It was cheaper than the proper bubble fluid. So we just used to keep filling the containers up with Star Drops. That was Marsworth Junction and that's where the Aylesbury Arm leaves the Grand Union and goes down to Bradford. <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> Only a bit. Actually there's Bradford upon Avon isn't there? There is but Which that's is still a long way away. Probably close. Still a different canal altogether. Uh, it goes down to Aylesbury. Uh, the old boatman used to call Marsworth Maffers. Maffers? Yeah and it reminded me of uh, somebody I used to know at college called Michael Maffers. But we never used to call him Michael Maffers, his nickname was Michael Mars Bar because he used to do this thing with a Mars Bar. You can't put that on. You cannot put that on. <laughs> Can we go buy a Mars Bar? No! A bird has just uh, taken a dump, so you're about to see an impromptu costume change which you might think affects continuity which is why I'm explaining it. <laughs> Have I covered it enough? Yeah. I still think we're going to get comments aren't we about I think, it. I think it's covered you enough. Why, why did you change your t-shirt halfway through? <laughs> you didn't explain it. Wow, 
Why is it always busy on corners? <laughs> I've changed my t-shirt. Whenever I put this one on, I always get steps a deeper shade of blue in my head. <laughs> I can still do the dance. Do you want to see it? <laughs> yes! No. <laughs> I want to see it! Iving Ho Beacon up in the distance, 757 feet above sea level. Want James Mason in Ivanhoe? I've got no idea. I always remember my granddad saying, shut up Ivanhoe, Tom. <laughs> so he's pretty well, well, isn't it? James Mason. Now he's an actor. Uh, anyway, I digress again. You do, you always do. 757 feet above sea level. You sometimes see gliders riding the thermals up the side of the hill. That sounds inappropriate, doesn't it? We had, to get, we had to get our thermals out of deep storage the other week because it's getting a bit chilly and now we've got the stove going. So apologies to anybody who saw six pairs of long johns drip drying on the towpath the other day. Just a couple of hundred yards that way something happened. It did. Well the old boat people, well they weren't old at the time, they were just working hard, used to call this area the fields because it was so open and <laughs> desolate and isolated. And a group of blokes on the 8th of August in 1963 took advantage of that. Now the main west coast mainline runs a couple of hundred yards to our left hand side. And one night they hijacked a train at Sears Crossing. It was the Royal Mail train from Glasgow to London yeah and they robbed it they got all the cash they took it down to the bridge and loaded it into vans it was the great train robbery and I went to have a look and they've actually renamed the bridge train robbers bridge yes <laughs> that's weird and I never knew it existed what because... do you mean you never knew it existed no I mean I never knew it was like just there all oh, right I know what I meant and that's what's <laughs> important 2.6 million quid they got away with. That's a lot of money back in 1963, isn't it? It's, God, yeah. To say a, a wage were about a fiver a week. And I reckon it were more than that, don't you? I reckon yeah. It, it must have cost Ronnie a, a lot more than that to live in Spain all those years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> were it Ronnie or Reggie? No! Oh, they were... <laughs> what? That's the crazy numpty. Did they not do train robbery? No. Back in the 19th century when the canals were packed with commercial boats, water supplies to the canal were a regular problem, especially the further away you get from the summits. So a series of pumping stations were built to pump water back to the summit. These on the Grand Union Canal were known as the Northern Engines, and a lot of the original buildings, like this one at Church Lock, are still around today. The Canal and River Trust owns 99 of the surviving pumping stations across the UK and 27 of them are still in operation today, working hard every day to supply water to the canals and in some cases 200 years after they were first built. If you go in too fast, you create a wash. It's like a wave that rolls along the side of the bank, and that can destroy birds' nests and kill young chicks, and it even wears away the canal bank, which can lead to breaches. It also causes mud boats to rock about, and that can loosen mooring pins and even pull them out of the ground altogether, especially at this time of year when the banks are quite soft. It's really important that we slow right down when we pass mud boats. We go into tick over, which is literally about one or two miles an hour. 
Unfortunately, this boat had one of its pins pulled out and it was drifting right across the canal in front of us. Oh well, I suppose it's time to put my cape and lycra pants on and rescue Wild Teasel. Well, maybe not the lycra. It didn't help that a wide beam refused to wait just a couple of minutes and forced its way past us while we were trying to re-secure the wayward wild teasel. I'm just glad the vast majority of boaters aren't as impatient as this. Frosty Jack. Top name for a boat. So what do you do when you go in down the canal and you just see a boat just like Straight across. I know some boaters would just go <laughs> straight through it. And had, the we, wood. had we not been on camera and in a rush, no, of course we wouldn't have done that. I've got a sweat on now. Can I have a jam donut? Yes. Well, we're somewhere. <laughs> we're always somewhere. <laughs> we're on the other side of Milton Keynes. Oh, faff. My head's a bit of a faff. It's a bit of a dark, scary circus lately. So it's taken a couple of days from when you last saw us to get here, yes. hasn't it? Uh, we've been stopping and starting, but we've worn the same clothes because we didn't want to confuse you any more than we already have by changing three times. That's because them them, I nearly call them sparrows, they're not sparrows, are they? Sparrows? Swallows. Swallows. Yeah, because the swallow shit all over my t-shirt. You can't say that. I bleep it out, they don't know the difference. I could say <laughs> I could say <laughs> Nobody knows, as long as I censor it, then it's all fine. Now, this wasn't the first place we moored. I normally like to choose the moorings because I like somewhere quiet with solar where there's no generators and no kids screaming and uh, people be murdered. Yeah, and... old blokes singing Julio Iglesias songs at all hours of the <laughs> night. I don't know. Uh, and so I thought I'd found this really nice spot just across from a boat that I didn't think had anybody living on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then as soon as we'd hammered the last pin in, we are on a schedule now. We have to be somewhere by a certain date because the winter stoppages start in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And we need to be quite a long way from where we are, about 80 miles from where we are in about four or five weeks. Yeah. Which for us is a lot of moving. A hell of a lot. So it's not quite a schedule, it's more of a mission. Mission. That makes it sound more exciting. Yeah. It gives me an excuse to wear my tights and cape again. It's a mission, but it's not impossible. It's not. Oh, that's just... No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Anyway, uh, we hope you've enjoyed your journey with us today. If you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. It helps us a lot. And if you've enjoyed this madness, uh, click like, the big thumbs up, uh, which is good. And also, if you are subscribed and you hit the notifications bell, YouTube will let you know every time we release a vlog. They will. Even better, help us out. Join the channel as a member or subscribe to us on Patreon and you'll get all sorts of like little perks and freebies and things yeah. like that. There's a boat coming. I'm going to run inside before they start talking to me. <laughs> so we'll see you next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye. Ta -da. Sorry, something biting me leg. I'd, 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 I'd honestly lose count of where we are and what we're doing. The cut, oh my God, I thought something were biting me then, it were a twig. To get that. <laughs> uh, we've got quite a distance to cover today, you all right? What are you, what are you eating for breakfast? I am getting bitten and I don't like this. And they're building some modern... Behind, you all right? Sniffy, morning sniffy. sniffer. 
Let's try that one again, shall we? Good <laughs> for a swallow. Standing on Otis. Oh. I'll get hate mail. <laughs> it's fine, don't worry about it. Show me the face you pull when we get cake out of the fridge. <laughs> drip, drip, drip. Oh, yeah, I got start that again. Oh my god, look at the swallows here. Do da do da do da do da do da do da do do da do da do da do What? Do da do da. We're gonna do it again because I'm unsure. It used to get in me clack. <laughs> and it does. Don't does some deodorants get in your clack? I don't put them in my mouth. We don't you know, we don't normally show you us readjusting ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Something very special happened. No, special? No, it didn't. I can't say special, can I? <laughs> they don't pay me enough to do that much research, <laughs> to be honest. Hello. Where are we, honey? <laughs> we can't say honey because that's taken, can we? No, we can't. Marmalade. Say. Where are we, marmalade? <laughs> to, to be honest. Do we? No. <laughs> I've forgotten what I'm saying. <coughs> Nice one, because like when you're in bed, I can be doing all sorts, and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> you're <all> right. <laughs> I will remember this time. 